जय श्री श्री राधा माधव की जय श्रील प्रभुपाद की जय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय So today we are reading from Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 4, The Creation of the Fourth Order, Chapter 26, King Puranjan Goes to the Forest to Hunt, Verse number 7, 4.26.7. कर्म नित्यतम विद्वान्त मानव कर्मना तेन राजेन्द्र ज्ञान न सलिप्यते Narad Muni continued to speak to King Prachin Barisha. My dear King, any person who works according to the directions of the Vedic scriptures does not become involved in fruitive activities. Purport by Shila Prabhupada. Just as a government may issue trade licenses, in order for its citizens to act in a certain way, the Vedas contain injunctions that restrain and regulate all of our fruitive activities. All living entities have come into this material world to enjoy themselves. Consequently, the Vedas are given to regulate sense enjoyment. One who enjoys his senses under the Vedic regulative principles does not become entangled in the actions and reactions of his activities. As stated in Bhagavad Gita 3.9, Yagna Artha Karmana One should act only for the performance of Yagya or to satisfy Lord Vishnu. Anyatra loka ayam karma bandhana. Otherwise, any action will produce a reaction by which the living entity will be bound. A human being is specially meant to attain liberation from the bondage of birth, death, old age, and disease. <coughs> He is therefore directed by the Vedic regulative principles to work in such a way that he may fulfill his desires for sense gratification and at the same time gradually become freed from material bondage. Action according to such principles is called knowledge. Indeed, the word Veda means knowledge. 
the words jnana nasalipyate indicate that by following the vedic principles one does not become involved in the actions and reactions of destructive activities everyone is therefore advised to act in terms of the vedic injunctions and not irresponsibly when a person within a state acts according to the laws and licenses of the government he does not become involved in criminal activities man made laws however are always defective because they are made by men who are prone to committing mistakes being illusion cheating and having imperfect senses the vedic instructions are different because they do not have these four defects vedic instructions are not subject to mistakes the knowledge of the vedas is knowledge received directly from god and there is consequently no question of illusion cheating mistakes or imperfect senses all vedic knowledge is perfect because it is received directly from god by the parampara disciplic succession in shrimad bhagavata 1.1.1 it is said tene brahma hridaya adi kavi the original creator of this universe known as the adi kavi or lord brahma was instructed by krishna through the heart after receiving this vedic instructions from lord krishna himself brahma distributed the knowledge by the parampara system to narad and narad in turn distributed the knowledge to vyas in this way vedic knowledge is perfect if we act according to vedic knowledge there is no question of being involved in sinful activities <clears throat> Om अज्ञानशलाकय चक्षुन्मील तस्म श्रीगुरव नम नम ओं विष्णुपदाय कृष्ण पृष्ठा भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी नामिने नमस्ते सारस्वती देवे गौरवाणी प्रचारिने निर्विशेषा शून्यवादी पाश्चात्य देशतारिने जय श्री कृष्णा चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर श्रीवासादि गौर भक्त वृंद हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे One second, I will just start. <laughs> Get some water. Hare Krishna. So we continue to discuss the instructions of Narad Muni to King Barishat, and he is sharing the story of Puranjan, who has uh, started uh, killing animals in the name of hunting. unnecessary killing and unrestricted killing and narad muni is telling parishad that such a thing can entangle and he is making a very important principle here that a person gets entangled when he performs actions Uh, without following the injunctions of scriptures and a person does not get entangled when he perform action as per the injunction of the scriptures so the injunction of the scriptures are very important 
to know, to gather information, to understand, and to follow, so that we don't get entangled. The soul, each one of us, is part and parcel of Krishna. Satchid Anand, spiritual. But by some miscalculation, today we are conditioned. Conditioned by the material nature. Condition means not natural. Like air condition. Air condition means not natural air. The air has some conditions, some force on it. So it makes it a different, unnatural. So condition soul, the natural occupation, the natural constitutional position of the soul is to be servant of Krishna. So conditioned by Maya, instead of being servant of Krishna, I am servant of dog or mind, or somebody else. That's un unnatural, unnatural for the soul. Maya acts in two ways. <coughs> Avaram Atmika Shakti and Prikshakapa Atmika Shakti. Avaram Atmika Shakti means covering potency. Maya covers our knowledge. I am soul, but Maya covers this knowledge. And I think I am boy, I am girl, I am manager, I am doctor, I am lawyer, I am father, I am mother, I am Indian, I am Kiwi, I am American, I am student, I am Brahmachari. I am Sanyasi, I am Grastha, I am Brahmana, I am Kshatriya, I am Vaishya, I am Sudra. All is I, I, I. is all covering of real knowledge that I am servant of Krishna. A pig is happy eating stool because the knowledge is covered that this is not an eatable. Otherwise, who would like to eat stool? So this is covering potency. Avran Atmika. Avran means cover. Anything we cover is called Avran. Avran Atmika. Covering the soul's real knowledge. So Maya covers our knowledge. And Prekshapa Atmika. Prekshapa Atmika means pulling down potency. Maya covers our knowledge. But when we try to come out, Maya pulls us down. It's like the prison. Prison, there is a gate to keep us inside. That is covering potency. And if we are following all the rules of the prison, we are good prisoners. The warden is the superintendent, jail officer is prison officer is happy. But if we try to escape, they will increase the force against us to pull us back into prison. If we don't try to escape, then they will not pull, they will not put additional force against us. They will say, okay, good prison, following all the rules. But if we try to escape, they will increase the guards, they will increase the binding chains or gate, double security, so that we don't go out. So Maya has covering potency, covering our knowledge, but if somebody tries to come out, then pulling down potency doesn't allow us to go out. And that we experience when we chant early morning. When we sleep early morning, Maya has covered us in ignorance, in Brahma Murta. But when we wake up and chant Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare, Maya puts us to sleep. Sometimes devotees feel lots of sleep during chanting. What is happening? Prekshapa Atmika. 
Maya is pulling us down, not allowing us to escape. Because by chanting, what we are doing is fighting with Maya, waging a war with Maya, trying to escape. So Maya increases the force. Let me put this devotee to sleep. Same time, early morning, 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock, Japa period, we feel sleepy. At that time, somebody brings a chappan book plate. All sleep will go away. Everything will go away. All the sleep, there will be nice prasad, nice eatables. And all the sleep will go away. What happened? Maya is attacking more when we chant. And immediately, if we stop chanting and talk to a devotee or a friend, how are you? How is life? There will be no sleep at all. The sleep will not force us. There will be no attack of Maya for sleeping. When you are talking to somebody during Japa period, no sleep. When you get prasad or food during Japa period, no sleep. When your mobile call comes during Japa period, no sleep. The chat Hare Krishna, sleep is powerful. Dozing off, that's attack of Maya tries to pull us down. So the soul is helpless. And soul is weak. Soul cannot come out of it, out of this situation on its own. Just like in a cinema, there is a heroine and there is a villain. And the villain kidnaps the heroine. And heroine cannot escape from the villain without the help of a hero. The soul is heroine. Maya is doing the duty of villain. And we cannot come out of Maya's Shakti, Avran Atmika and Prikshapa Atmika Shakti on our own. We need a hero. And that hero is Shastra. That hero is scriptures. We need a hero in life. Scriptures, Shastra are the one who act as hero to free the soul from Maya. There's a whole package with the scripture. There's a whole process of bhakti. But the main thing is the scripture. Samandha Abhideya Prayoja. Do's and don'ts of bhakti. So Srila Vyasdev, who is Krishna himself, 5,000 years before, he sat in meditation and he saw the future. And in the future he saw, especially in Kali Yuga, people will be unlucky, less duration of life, always quarrelsome, and no interest in spiritual life, hypocrites, lazy, unclean, unhealthy. So what did he do? He could have gone all over the world to travel and preach. He could have made a website in your HTML. But he wrote books sitting in Badrika Ashram for the benefit of whole Kali Yuga because he knew in future there will be printing and publication and transportation and these books can go in every hand. So these books are the basis. Yajay wrote these books. He wrote four Vedas and Puranas and Andhanid Upanishads, 18 Puranas, Vedanta Sutra. But even after writing these books, he was not happy. He was feeling some pinch, some despondency. So at that time, his Guru Narad Muni visited him and he asked, Why am I not feeling happy by writing Vedas and Puranas and Upanishads and Vedanta Sutras? And Narada said, Because you have not glorified exclusively Krishna, you have given them opportunity to do sense gratification, Dharma, Atra, Kama, Moksha. The next day, Vyasadeva again sat in meditation and had darshan of Govind. And what did he saw behind Govind? One Mataji, one lady with a gungat covering her face as a shadow. That's Maya Devi. She cannot come in front of Govind. 
And he wrote Srimad Bhagavatam by getting more access to absolute truth, by getting higher realization in absolute truth, that Maya can be overcome by Govind. Maya cannot come in front of Govind. She is behind Govind. Mama Maya Durataya. Krishna says, My Maya is Durataya. Very difficult to give up. For one who surrenders to Krishna can give up. And that is exclusive to discuss in Srimad Bhagavatam. Srimad Bhagavatam starts beyond Kaitava Dharma, beyond Dharma, Artha, Kama, Moksha. Srimad Bhagavatam, written by Vyasdev, he received it from Narad Muni. Narad Muni received it from Brahma. And Brahma received it from Krishna. So this is coming in parampara, perfect knowledge. Because Krishna is perfect. So whatever he gave to Brahma is perfect. And Brahma gave as it is to Narad Muni, so that is perfect. And Narad Muni gave to Vyasdev as it is, that is perfect. And that's how it's coming down to us by His divine grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami, Srila Prabhupada. Perfect knowledge. Worldly laws and knowledge is defective. Because a conditioned soul has four defects. He commits mistake. And he has he can be prone to illusion. And he has cheating propensity. And he has defective senses. But Acharyas and Krishna and Avtas and Vyasdev and Brahma and Narad Muni, they are not ordinary conditioned souls. They are perfect living entities. So they give knowledge beyond defect. Perfect knowledge. Krishna is perfect. So we follow a perfect person. We become perfect. There was one very intelligent genius man. Travelling from his village to his friend's village. And two, three hours walking, walking. He was tired coming to the forest. He was exhausted and he saw a river. He jumped in the water and he swam and drank and he felt relieved just by touching water. And he said, wow, the God Krishna, the creator is so intelligent. Just in between forest, he made river and he made water. And just by drinking water and bathing, I am so much relieved. Wow, water is first class. Krishna is first class. And he continued walking. It was summer season, so very hot sun. And he was perspiring. For two, three hours he walked more. And he was tired because of the heat. Fatigue. And he came under a big tree. And he felt very cool. Thanda, thanda, cool, cool. He was relieved. He said, wow, Krishna is so great. Above the tree is such a hot sun. Below the tree is so nice, cool. One centimeter away from the tree shade, it is hot sun. One centimeter inside the shade, it is so cool. Krishna is so intelligent. Right on the street, he made sun. Sorry, he made tree. And I can sit under a tree and get so much shade. He was very happy and appreciative of Krishna. And he was tired. He sat down. He fell sleepy. He lied down. To sleep. And what did he see? Such a huge tree and so many branches and so many leaves and small, small fruits. And said, yeah, Krishna did one mistake. Such a huge tree, he put small, small fruits. And such a small creeper, he puts big, big watermelons. He did a mistake. He didn't balance the load. What he should do next time? In big tree, he should put big watermelon. In small plant, he should put small fruits. He should balance the load. Big tree, big fruit, small trees. Small plant, small fruit. But he did ulta. He put small fruit in a big tree here. That is mistake. But it's okay. 99 marks out of 100 is fine. One mistake is okay. And that intelligent man slept. After two hours, he woke up. How did he wake up? Because one small fruit fell from the tree on his head. Then he got startled and he woke up and he said, Krishna, thank you very much. Not putting a watermelon here. 
If Krishna had put watermelon here, I would have died by watermelon falling on my head. So Krishna is perfect. So sometimes you may not understand what is happening in my life and around me and how it is good, but we should know Krishna is perfect. Like a child playing with toy for two hours. Happy. And somebody comes and take away the toy and the child is crying. Is that a present situation? No. But mothers do that every day. Yeah, now it's okay. Why? Because mother is a well-wisher. So mother gives toy, mother takes away toy. In both the cases, mother is perfect uh, giving toy. Because now it's time for eating or homework or sleep. So toy time is over. So Krishna gives us something. Krishna takes away. It may be money. It may be health. It may be a near and dear one. It may be job. It may be position. It may be reputation. Krishna gave. Krishna take it away. He is mother. Because now there is something else to be done in life. So even if we don't understand what is happening, but we should know that Krishna is perfect. He is my well-wisher. He gave something. I enjoyed it. Now he took it away. I don't have to cry. Taking away toy is not bad. The child is attached to the toy. And that's why the child has pain. Taking away toy is part of life. Because when mother takes away toy, she gives a meal. She takes away the toy, she gives the school homework. Or she puts to bed. So the next event is for my benefit. But because I am attached to the previous event, when it goes away, I feel pain. And it is foolishness of the conditioned soul. Change will occur. Change of events will occur. Summer will become winter. Winter will become summer. And if I am attached to winter, I will have pain when winter goes away. If I am attached to summer, I will have pain when summer goes away. Change will happen. So why to get attached to objects and people around us? Pain is not because mother took toy. Pain is because I am attached to a toy. Which mother gave for temporary period. So whatever we have given in the material world is temporary given by Krishna. So we know it's temporary. This mobile is temporary. This house is temporary. This car is temporary. This friendship is temporary. This cloth is temporary. But if I am attached, the day it ends, the soul is permanent, I will be unhappy. So Vyasdev is perfect. So Shastras are perfect. To discipline us. Disciple. Who is a disciple? One who is disciplined. He is a disciple. Shishya. Shishya means Shista. Shista means discipline. So one who is shist, disciplined, he is disciple, shishya. Both shista and shishya come from the same Sanskrit word dhatu, shasta. And two more comes from shastra. Shastra, scripture and shastra, weapon. Please understand this. These four words come from one root word. Shishya, disciple, Shista, discipline, Shastra, scripture, Shastra, weapon. Shastra, Shastra, both have equal purpose. What? To become, to make a person Shista, discipline. So I can become disciplined either by a weapon, pain, punishment, force, or by Shastra, knowledge, conviction, intellectual understanding. So the purpose of Shastra and Shastra is same, discipline. Choice is ours. We want to be disciplined by Shastra or we want to be disciplined by Shastra. If we learn a lesson in Bhagavatam class and change our life and habits, that is easy. If you don't learn a lesson in morning Bhagavatam class, same lesson we will learn daytime through some life experience of pain. That's difficult. Just like sometimes children go to coaching class to learn the same thing which they are supposed to learn in school. 
in school the fees is less in coaching class the fees is more tuition so either you learn cheap in the school or you pay more and learn in tuition so if you learn in bhagavatam class there will be no pain in life because pain is a teacher but it's costly so if you learn in bhagavatam class nice but is the same you don't learn in bhagavatam class then the same lesson krishna will teach us through life experience which will be painful that is shastra mayas shastra to give misery three types of miseries misery from body and mind and living entities and nature around us, demigods so shastra and shastra it's our choice either learn in shastra bhagavatam class or learn in shastra by pain in life painful learning costly learning i met i spoke to a devotee couple of days back he called me very distressed because he lost money in share market a huge amount so either you learn in bhagavatam class no share market no gambling or you learn by loss painful very difficult so scriptures they teach us first class teaching and we just follow them the human form of life is for liberation but in conditional life we cannot avoid sense gratification so scriptures tell us how to do sense gratification without jeopardizing our liberation how to do sense gratification without getting entangled yesterday we discussed the mouse is finding relief but it comes to the shade of a cobra and gets killed so when we do sense gratification we get karma bandhan we get entangled in the laws of nature so scriptures tell us how to do sense gratification without getting entangled for example i want to eat samosa so i go to the market purchase samosa and eat what happens i get entangled the scriptures tell me make samosa at home offer to shyam sundar and then honor prasadam no you are not entangled so when we follow krishna we are not entangled recent not recently few years before there was a news that there is a person who took a plane and landed it in a building world trade center in america 911 and burned few innocent people so what you will call such a person who puts fire to a building and burns people you call terrorist if another news comes that a person not just burned a building he burned a whole city not building whole city what will call such a person double terrorist or maha terrorist or terrorist square against hanuman hanuman went and burned whole lanka do we call hanuman terrorist no jai bajrang bali jai hanuman we worship him what is the difference the difference is one burned for himself or some false idea and another burned for ram so if you burn a whole city for ram you are not entangled if you burn your gas for yourself you are entangled in the kitchen if you cook an offer to krishna an honor prasadam whole family nobody is entangled but if you cook don't offer to krishna an honor even one grain of rice you are entangled because everything belongs to krishna if a servant comes to master's house goes to the master's kitchen takes milk rice sugar and makes nice sweet rice and eats and the master will tell servant get out how can you use my raw material make 
in my kitchen and eat. But the servant makes nice sweet rice from master's raw material and offers to master. And master eats and says, wow, this is very nice. Why don't you also take? And the servant will get it. So Krishna is the master of our house. He is the owner of our house. We are servants of Krishna. This is Krishna's house. So we cook in our master's house with the raw material of the master and we don't give him. Then we get entangled. We are chore. We are thieves. But if we cook and offer to Krishna, the master is so kind. He'll say, you also have the same menu. You also eat. And we honor the remnants of the master that is servant of Krishna. Then we are not entangled. So this is how the scriptures help us fulfill our sense enjoyment by giving rules and regulations and restrictions. Animals are not supposed to follow these rules, but we are supposed to follow these rules. Like the government gives license for some trade or some activity. So if you do the trade or do the business as per the license norms of the government, you are a good citizen. But if you don't pay tax, you don't fulfill the government requirements, you are a bad citizen. So Krishna has made laws. The perfect creator has made perfect laws for us. And if I follow them, I am a good person. If I don't follow them, I am a bad person. Bad citizen. citizen is criminal. He has to go to hell. I mean, he has to go to jail. So we have to go to hell, to Yamaraj. And get suffering there. And the cycle of birth and death will continue. But the human form of life is for liberation. So we should follow the Vedic injunctions. Now Vedas are too vast. So there comes Guru and Sadhu. I still have Prabhupada. He is founder Acharya of his con, pre-eminent Shiksha Guru. So he has picked up the instruction from all the scriptures and given us in his purpose and given us a lifestyle, minimum what to do. And if we do that as it is, without addition, without deviation, we will please Krishna and go back home back to Godhead. So Guru Sadhu, Shastra. Guru has to follow Shastra, Sadhu has to follow Shastra. But we have to follow the prescriptions of Guru and Sadhu. Just like a pharmacy, there are many medicines and all are good. But we cannot say, my favorite color is blue, give me blue medicine. Oh, my friend, you gave pink medicine, I want pink medicine. Oh, yellow is cheaper, give me yellow medicine. No. We can't pick up a medicine from a pharmacy. We first need to go to doctor who will give RS prescription. This is what you take. This much dose. This many times. What happened? The display close. This many times you take the medicine. So we take the prescription to the pharmacy and accordingly get the medicine and we take and it is good for. So we need doctor and pharmacy. So we need guru and scriptures. Guru will advise which part of scriptures is to be followed at this stage of our spiritual growth. Then we do that. And uh, everybody's prescription is different. Somebody may have same medicine 250 mg. Somebody may have same medicine 500 mg. Somebody may have 250 mg for 7 days. Somebody have 500 mg for 3 days. Somebody may have for 15 days. Somebody may have one every day. Somebody may have three every day. So don't just tell, oh, you went up to the doctor. Uh, why don't you forward me your prescription? Uh, my symptoms are same. I will be fine. I don't have to go to doctor. No, no, no. Everybody's prescription is different. We have to visit the sadhu. We have to get consultation. And we have to follow the scriptures. So sometimes a lecture, some statements may be applicable to our uh, life at this stage of our bhakti. Some statement may not be applicable to our life at this stage of bhakti. That is for future. Or some statements were applicable previous before. A lecture is a full package for many different kind of audiences. So we have to get Rx. We have to get prescription. And accordingly pick up the instructions of the Shastras. 
so that not only our sense gratification is taken care, our material desires and ambitions are taken care, but eventually they become zero. They become zero so that I get liberated. No karma bandhan. Goal of life is not self gratification. That is because we can't avoid it at this stage of our life. But eventually we have to give anya abhilashita shunyam, give up all this. So these rules are meant for our betterment. Like uh, we drive car on the road and there are traffic lights and traffic rules. Is a red light. And if you go from your location to airport, just assuming there are 20 red lights, 20 traffic lights, red. So that means one minute you have to wait. So are you delayed by 20 minutes? Is a traffic officer doesn't want, traffic department doesn't want you to reach on airport on time. That's why they put red light. And if today night all the red lights are removed and tomorrow morning you go to airport, will you reach 20 minutes earlier? No, you will not even reach because the traffic will be jammed. People will go from left to right, all the directions. So the traffic light is there not to delay our journey, but to make us reach safely at our destination. So the regulations of the Vedas are there for our benefit. So that we coexist. So that we fulfill our desires and also give up those desires for the purpose of liberation. To go back home, back to content. So there are do's and don'ts. The do's is that we wake up early morning, take bath, apply tilak, wear wash clothes, go for mangalarti, pay obeisances, chant our rounds, nursing arti, dosi arti, chanting and singarati and guru puja and class. And don'ts are no meat eating, no intoxication, no gambling, no illicit sex. And on Ekadashi, the do's and don'ts are no grains, and more chanting and more reading. So the do's and don'ts of bhakti, these rules are there so that we get purified, we come out of this conditional existence. So shastras are our hero, and we should follow shastra. Books are the basis. Any confusion, any dilemma, Papa said in his con, just refer to my book. I have given everything. So we should get into habit of reading books, reading Bhagavatam, reading Chaitanya Chaitanya, Bhagavad Gita, Nectar of Devotion, Krishna book, Nectar of Instruction, Isha Upanishad, and other books by Prabhupada. We should get habit of discussing this book, scrutinizingly uh, reading and hearing and asking questions, and every day hearing Bhagavatam. So this Shastras and the association of sadhus and the mercy of the Guru. Guru Sadhu Shastra. This is required to take decisions in life, to accept what is favorable for my bhakti and reject what is unfavorable for my bhakti. So Vyasadeva is so merciful. He has given the Shastras. So when we follow the Shastras, we are not entangled in it. We are free like Anuma. But if we don't follow the Shastras, then we are entangled in it. And we are in prison like criminals and terrorists. The Shastra and Shastra, choice is ours. A peaceful learning from Shastras or a painful learning from Shastra to make us disciplined. So, intelligent person, more of goodness, will prefer Shastra. And that's what we should do. Okay? We end here. Thank you very much. Srimad Bhagavatam ki jai. Srila Prabhupada ki jai. Hare Krishna. If there are any comments or questions, you may please ask. Hare Krishna Prabhuji, Dhanavad Prana. Thank you very much for a very nice class. That really bringing out uh, the few points like what is Abhornatmika Shakti and Prakshetatmika Shakti of the Maya, how it entangles us. And when we try to get rid of this condition, uh, conditioned way of life we are put into this material world, uh, how they obstruct us. But if we take the help of Shastra through a guru, 
who has come from the parampara system, he can save us and he can prescribe individually us for what is needed for us. And instead of depending on our mental speculation, we should always surrender to a guru who from the Shastra prescribed the right thing. And the Shastra is nothing but the words of the Lord. Uh, and he will help us to go through, to get rid of this entanglement. And in this way, we can, through the use of Shastra, we can, and with the help of a guru, we can get rid of our conditioned life and achieve the goal of human life. Otherwise, we have to remain in this bondage of repeated birth and death. Thank you very much, Prabhu, for that. And if anyone has any question, you can ask for your question. Thank you, Prabhu. So, Prabhu, it appears there is no other question. So, the class may be concluded. Thank you very much once again, Prabhu, for your very nice class and informative class. It is a beacon of light to, to all of us. Hare Krishna. Bancha Kalpatarudya Shyam Kripashin Dubri. Kripashin Dubri. Kripashin Dubri. Kripashin Dubri. Kripashin Population of the key, Jai, 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 J